everyone, it's Catherine, a fourth grade TA through the Young Scientist Program at USC. I normally teach at Mac Elementary and Norwood Elementary Schools. This week, we're going to be learning about squishy circuits. This is today's agenda. First, we're going to learn about things that conduct electricity. Then we're going to ask, is Plato a conductor? We're gonna do our experiment of squishy circuits and end with observations and a conclusion. Then we're gonna talk about our scientists of the week. In our question box in our scientific journal, let's write this question. What types of things conduct electricity? Have you ever noticed that the end of your charger for your computer is metal and goes into the outlet, but the rest of the charger is wrapped in rubber so you can hold it? Why is this? Well, a conductor is a material that allows electricity to pass through it. Examples are metal or salt and water. An insulator is a material that does not allow electricity to pass through it. An example might be wood, plastic, or rubber. Can you think of other types of conductors or insulators? For today's experiment, we're going to learn about two types of circuits. An open circuit is created when there is an incomplete path for electrons to follow, as in the circle is open. A closed circuit is created when there is a complete path for electrons to follow and electricity will be conducted, as in the circle is completely closed. For our prediction today, we're going to guess. Is Plato a conductor or an insulator? Fill in this sentence in your scientific journal. Our materials for today are Plato, coin batteries, uninsulated wire, a clothespin, a LED light bulb, and if you need it, electrical tape and scissors. Before we get started, I want to warn you that short circuits are dangerous. This is what happens when you connect a battery or power source to itself. Therefore, do not connect the LED light directly to the battery. To start, create two equally sized lumps of Play-Doh, about a quarter of size and spherical. Then take your coin battery and two pieces of wire and connect them so one wire is on top and the other one is on the bottom. Use your clothespin to keep them together. You can also use electrical tape here if you need to. Then put the two open ends of the wire into the Play-Doh. So one side is in each Play-Doh. Make sure the Play-Doh doesn't touch. Now connect your LED light to your Play-Doh by putting one leg in one Play-Doh ball and the other leg in the other Play-Doh ball. If it doesn't light up, try switching the LED light around. After playing with it, you might notice that the LED light has two different lengths of legs and that the longer leg needs to be connected to the top of the coin battery and the shorter leg needs to be connected to the bottom of the coin battery for the light to light up. In your observation section of your notebook, write down if your LED light bulb was able to light up and any adjustments you made. Also, try to draw what your setup looked like. Now it's time for your conclusion section. You should fill in these two sentences. I learned that blank. And Plato is a conductor or insulator because blank. After this experiment, we've discovered that Plato is indeed a conductor. Why is it conductive though? Well, Play-Doh contains salt that has been dissolved in water and salty water is a conductor of electricity. Now it's time for our scientist of the week. Hertha Arton was born in 1854. She attended Cambridge University where she studied math and received a BSc degree from the University of London. She helped her husband with his experiments in physics and electricity, eventually becoming an expert and publishing papers from her own research. She published her famous work, The Electric Arc, in 1902. She was the first female member of the Institution of Electrical Engineers in 1899. In 1902, she became the first woman nominated a Fellow of the Royal Society of London. In 1904, she became the first woman to read her own paper before the Royal Society, and she received the Hughes Medal for her investigations in 1906. Thank you for participating in this week's lesson. I hope you enjoyed it. Stay tuned for next week's lesson. See you then.